of the postgraduate program um, in performing arts of the University Federal of, of uh, the state of Rio de Janeiro, UNIRI in Rio. He is the coordinator of Pop Lab, uh, that's the laboratory of studies in pop philosophy. And he is an experienced teacher of philosophy with emphasis on modern and contemporary aesthetics and dealing mainly with the following topics, body, image, performance, art education, Brazilian, uh, Brazilian culture and pop culture. And the title of his presentation is The Teacher as Performer from Pop Philosophy to Pop Pedagogy. And before Charles starts, I just would ask everybody to, uh, throughout Charles' presentation, if you have any questions, to put that on the chat. So when Charles finishes, I will, I will read in the questions one by one. So then over to you, Charles. Okay, thank you, Magna. Um, I'd like to thank for the invitation, especially Paul, uh, for the opportunity uh, to share some thoughts about my work. And I, I will ask you for passing about my, my terrible English, but I think uh, I brought a lot of images and I think um, perhaps we can talk together at the end. Uh, I hope you have read the article and I mean, I will share with you one presentation to show image videos, and I, I hope it works. <laughs> okay. Um, I will share with you um, now this presentation. So, you, um, can you see it? It's okay? Or oh, I have to put video, it's okay? Okay. So, see. that's the title, you know already. It's from pop philosophy to pop pedagogy. I mean, I, what I want to do is to, to talk about my experience doing pop philosophy. What does it mean? And now I'm going, I'm trying to change and trying to make a bridge from pop philosophy to pop pedagogy. I've written a kind of manifesto. If we have time, I would like to, to show you uh, today. It's not finished, it's not published. It will be the premiere, the first time I will share it. Um, but, um, the idea is, it's an experience of, um, um, I mean, to, a, met a methodology to work with philosophy in a way people can understand. And now I'm trying to do the same for other areas. I mean, you can do, you can teach physics, biology, uh, mathematics in a pop way, in a pop models that I'm trying to do with this idea of pop pedagogy. Um, what is important to say, I have this uh, pop lab, this is a laboratory of studies of pop philosophy uh, I'm coordinating. I, I did a book, uh, I have here, but so I don't know if you can see uh, that's the book <laughs> i written 10 years ago and now it's um, Brazilian uh, government has adopted and um, it's used in public school in public school public schools uh, it's a kind of um, supporting literature for people learning philosophy and this is a kind of uh, introduction uh, in philosophy in a pop way, that means I'm trying to make a relationship between the concepts and authors of the philosophical tradition with contents of art and mass culture. That means I, I try to put Plato to talk to Mafalda, and I try to put Hegel to talk to dialogue 
with rock lyrics and samba lyrics. That's that's why I, I call pop philosophy. Um, but what I think now that some kind of pop pedagogy too, and I'm inspired by this graffiti um, uh, I found here close to me is near to the Maracanã Stadium. Um, and it says something, Magnet can help me uh, with the translation because in Portuguese it's, it's different. But anyway, it, it's something like football is not learning in school. That's why uh, Brazil, Brazilian can play very well uh, football, can, can mm -hmm. play very well the ball, something like that. Yeah? And um, I love this graphic because, um, I mean, it's old. It's before the, uh, uh, the was, this graffiti was painted before the famous 71 defeat against German in 2014. Um, now Brazilian is not good anymore, neither in philosophy, neither in football. But anyway, I, 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 I'm reading this graffiti as a critique, a, a critique against uh, the way the, the, the schools are handling the knowledge, knowledge in general. I mean, uh, as if the school had the power to turn interesting subjects into things they, they don't matter for the students. Um, uh, as if there, there is a, in school um, uh, a separation between knowledge and life, between science and street. Um, the, the idea, the very idea is we can play well football because we, we learn football in the street. We don't learn football in school. Um, I, I, well, all the time think about that um, for philosophy, how, how to learn philosophy in another way. But now I think it can, it can be um, applied to every subject. In, in this way, I found a very interesting book um, published in 2015. Um, it's called Educational Institutions in Horror Film. It's an research, um, American guy, it's a doctoral uh, research. And he's trying to show that uh, almost 18% uh, of the horror films in American scene uh, from 70s and 80s. This school is the locus of these films. Most of the films have um, the place, the space where, where people are, um, or have this terrible situation of schools. Um, there are the 20 percent uh, the space of um, amusement park, but it's not worth catching. I mean, it's very interesting. Uh, the idea that this school is uh, a locus of trauma uh, in American horror films. And um, you say um, um, it's, uh, it's uh, 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 the situation where I can see that it's the, by the movie Check the Turn. I, I don't know if you know it for someone who is working with pop philosophy. Movies like Shrek, it's very important. I mean, my kids, they love it. And there's an, an incredible uh, dialogue. Uh, if you have seen the movie, or Shrek, uh, Dante in, in Puss, Puss the Book, um, uh, they are looking for Arthur. <laughs> That's very funny to, to tell for you about this dialogue because it's something for you, the, the, I mean, for you native people from Britain, uh, something uh, very easy, but uh, it's very funny that they, call to the, they come to, the, to this building and, and the doctor asks to the, to the Shrek, what kind of place is this? 
and track um, answer. Well, my stomach aches and my palm just got, got sweet. Must be a high school, like a high school. And this descri uh, descri description um, uh, this describes very well for me what uh, a, school, a school means uh, most of the time. Most often, schools are a place of oppression and anguish, not of joy and freedom. Uh, and I, I have the idea to, uh, with pop philosophy, to fight against an, an image of uh, a philosophy of something that people cannot understand. And pop pedagogy, it's a fight against uh, this, this image of the school of, of some place of authority. Um, but to understand this project of pop pedagogy, is it's necessary to understand better the project of pop philosophy. It, it, it's okay now. Huh? Um, there are a lot of memes and jokes about um, how difficult it is to understand philosophy, especially with Hegel. I found this one, but there are a lot of them. I, my, uh, my doctor research was about Hegel, one of the most difficult philosophers in the story. And I, I love this, this man, this joke, because it's called an easy choice. You, if you can choose one power to be invisible, to read minds, to teleport, or you can read Hegel and also understand it. Uh, it's an easy choice. Uh, the, uh, the biggest the superpower you can have, uh, you could have, you'd be uh, read and understand Hegel. And that's the image uh, we have in philosophy, in the pop culture, in the media, uh, in everyday life. So uh, when I began to work with pop philosophy, it was a fight against this image. It's funny because um, Hegel himself, he, uh, <laughs> he was victim of bullying. Uh, that is, um, uh, how do you say that? Uh, a draw of a uh, uh, drawing of um, a friend of Hegel. Hegel was 20 years old in this time. And the nickname of Hegel already in his student days was the old man because he was boring, he was serious. And that's a, a, a little bit image of, that we have of uh, philosophy in general. Um, the most famous image of philosophy is this from Rodin, uh, Rodin thinker, um, uh, in opposite of the, the caricature of Hegel, that's a young guy, that's a beautiful guy, Charles. strong guy. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Uh -huh. Charles, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Some people are finding it difficult to hear you. They ask okay. either if you can speak a bit slowly or, or raise okay. your, your volume. Uh, okay, I can change my microphone if you if can be better. Or, or speak a little bit lower. Uh, okay, yeah, you say me if, if it works or not. Should I repeat the last time or it's okay? I just can't, yeah, we repeat this the last part if you can. Okay. So I'm, uh, I'm trying to, to, to show you something you already know. It, it's this image, the traditional image of the philosopher um, as, as someone who is doing something very, very boring, very difficult to understand. And what I'm trying to show you is that what I call pop philosophy is a fight against this image. And uh, before I, I, I told you about this, um, this joke, the uh, 
people are have do, done with Hegel in his student times, they they got the nickname the the older guy, the the the, the, um, the alter in, in German, the old man, uh, when he was just twenty years old, and now I'm I'm speaking about the image of Rodin. Uh, hold on, think it is very famous, and that's normal. The image we know from uh, we associate with philosophy. And when I look at, at this image, I can see a, a, a young man, a strong man, uh, naked, uh, beautiful. He's thinking and he's not moving. And um, and that's the, the image we have when I'm in doing when in doing philosophy. We stop to to act. We stop. We stop to move. We need to stop to think. I don't know if you say that in English. We say in Portuguese, stop to think. Um, and, and, and then the image is something that some some person does have not nothing to do with life with practice is just he sit there and and he's thinking all the time um it's okay hope you, you understand it um um for me it's crazy because his posture his position the body position is from someone it, it looks someone he's sad he, uh, he, he um it, it vagues his his head. Um, there is a relationship between um, between uh, thinking and grief. Uh, it's something um, very usual to make this uh, association. In Brazil, we say only people they are not well informed they are happy. Uh, only people they don't think can be happy. If you think you. You are, you are unhappy. And that is the image, uh, the, the traditional image of philosophy. I was, I, I, I spent some time um, researching on the, on the pictures of melancholy, uh, melancholy in the history of art. And I realized that there are similar bod, body posture, position, of, uh, the position of the body, the head, um, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the, um, it, it's similar from someone is fed and someone is thinking. Um, the other very famous image is from Humbra, the Dutch uh, painter. It's called Philosopher in Meditation. Um, and it shows an old guy in his sitting, in his thinking. He's in front of the uh, front of the window. It, it comes light from outside. You can imagine that something is happening outside, but he's not. Um, he's not in action. He's he walks. The philosopher walks the street from from the top, from the outside. He's outside of the action. He's outside of the street. And that is for me. Um, um, I mean, the very image of the, uh, how we see philosophy in everyday life. And then the, a lot of discussion was, um, what is the utility of doing philosophy? Uh, for you people from Britain, um, I used to show um, a sketch from Monty Python. There's a human group you know that's called uh, football philosophers. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you know it. And that's making this joke the philosophers are thinking they don't look at the ball, they discuss. But they, they they think, but they don't anything. There is no action, just conversation uh, when the flowers the flowers are together. It's a very funny uh, joke. 
I like a lot, but I'm, I'm fighting against this image. And um, um, the, the, I believe the joke from Mont Python is uh, just a remix from a very, very old joke. It's about Thales de Mileto, uh, the first philosopher. Um, people tell that he was watching the stars, then he failed to watch where he was walking, and, and then fell into a well, into a hole. Uh, I mean, the joke um, from Monty Python, the football of philosophy, is just an uh, renewing and very old joke. The first philosopher has already a first joke about not seeing the reality and being absent minded. Uh, that's, that is the image. Um, so I'm trying to, um, to, to fight uh, this idea. Um, um, I like to, to think um, uh, as Mafalda from the Argentinian uh, Kino as an um, um, opposite idea uh, against this uh, bad image of philosoph someone who has not to do with the street, with the life. Um, when people see the football play or footballs, they are not looking at the ball. When people talk about Thales, he's not looking at his own way at the, the, the well or the holes in the, in the well. And I think what would Thales say if he, he could come back? Um, probably he would say something like that. Um, you people, you guys are just looking to the holes. You are not looking to the stars. You are not looking to the important questions. You are, you are just looking to the things they are urgent but they are not important. Um, and that's what my father said in this, in this picture, this cartoon. Uh, she asked, oh, what are you doing there? Are you searching the roots of the nation? And the guy says, no, gas, no girl, it's just a gas escape. And then my father goes and, and says uh, a little angry, like always, the urgent doesn't leave time for the important. Um, the jokes about philosophy, they are saying the philosophy, they, look, they don't look for the, the questions of life. Um, they forget the question of, uh, of life. The philosophers, for me, they are saying for us, hey, people, you are forgetting the important things. You're only looking for the other things. Um, and what I'm trying to do is to mix um, the urgent with important. I don't know if you got it. What is different between the, the urgent and the important? Um, it's urgent to pay bills. It's urgent to, to suffer when I love someone and this person doesn't love me. It's urgent to, to avoid, to, to die in this time of pandemics. Um, it's urgent to understand how it, how it's the end of the series from Netflix, dark. I cannot understand what happened there. It's very um, urgent to understand it. Um, but there are other questions. They are not urgent, but they are important. Uh, important are uh, at the other side. It's the wave of planetary nihilism we are having now in all the world. Um, the transformation of minds and bodies through new technologies. And if it is urgent to avoid my own death, it's important to learn to organize a common life and social life between us uh, mortal beings. How can we live together uh, being mortal? Um, and that's 
these kind of questions is really what the philosophy um, trying to get the attention from people who are just living the the everyday uh, urgent problems. But I hope you, you can understand that uh, traditional philosophy tries to reconnect people with important issues, but forgetting the urgent issues. Pop philosophy is trying to reconnect the urgent with important. It's what I'm doing. Um, uh, this name, pop philosophy, it's not, um, I, I didn't invent it, I didn't create it, I, I stole it from Deleuze. Deleuze has um, used it sometimes his expression, but he never explained. And so I'm trying to develop what it could mean. I have to say, I'm not the only one uh, in the world to doing that. That in Brazil, there are lots of different people doing that, but in the world, there are different groups doing pop philosophy. There are uh, people in Marseille, in south of France, they are doing every year uh, pop philosophy week. There are a lot of people in the United States, in South Korea, and in Germany. So I'm doing in my own way, and that's inspired by the list. Uh, you, you can see the, the, this quotation. Um, I can resume the uh, ideas of pop philosophy. Um, uh, there are other ways to articulate concepts uh, and image because um, what's important to say the traditional philosophy, there are only two ways to work with Image. Uh, traditional philosophy uh, try to delete it, or to ignore image, uh, like the like Hegel. Hegel is the most difficult philosopher philosoph philosoph in the history because he's trying to write and to think only with concepts and trying to avoid image. As a good Protestant, Hegel think. Um, images are bad, uh, images image are below to the concept. And the other possibility in philosophy is to use images as, um, as examples or, or allegories. I mean, uh, I, I'm using the image to, to show why I'm thinking. And pop philosophy is trying to associate concept and image in a way that image can lead the process. Imagination can be the, the, the guide, can be the, um, the head um, uh, in the front of the movement. That's the most important idea. I, I, I do one kind of distinct, distinction between pop one and pop two because now, I don't know in, in Britain, in England, but in Brazil, pop is, is an word we use for music we, that's very easy, very uh, fast to do, and, and very fast to forget too, something very superficial. And I think there are people are doing pop philosophy in this sense uh, of pop music, the pop industry. Uh, like, um, I don't know, you know, in Britain, there's um, a lot of books, they are called um, philosophy in 90 minutes, or um, Nietzsche for people or um, stressed. Uh, in Brazil, there are books called Nietzsche for people or trying to, to make exams or, or trying to do exams. I mean, I kind of self-help. And that's not what I mean when, uh, what I mean when I, I'm trying to do pop philosophy. I, I'm, I'm thinking of a uh, meaning of pop eyes, pop one, um, and that's the meaning of uh, the pop art in the 50s, in the 60s. Uh, pop art um, was referred to a counterculture movement change the world through sexual revolution, uh, 
criticisms of the Protestant work ethics and resistance to authority. And pop art, I mean, uh, people think that pop art was invented in the USA, but perhaps it was invented in, in Britain. The, um, perhaps this is the first uh, image of, of pop art. And the very idea is to mix them uh, and, and um, uh, avoid avoiding the separation between high and low culture. That is the most important idea of pop art. There is not superiority of the music from Beethoven and the music of a rock band or from, um, from people in the street. There is no uh, superiority between a uh, work of art of um, Van Gogh and a graffiti uh, from Banksy. You, I, we have to um, uh, reevaluate this uh, 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 this judgment in the culture, and then that is what I'm trying to do uh, with pop philosophy. I'm bringing connection Hegel with Homer Simpson or Aristotle with Calvin, Calvin and Hobbes. That is the idea. Then going to, to the end, um, uh, of course, uh, that means expansion of, of patterns and terms of thought. Uh, but the most important thing is that um, we are changing uh, the way we are handling uh, the subject. Um, at the own side, we are trying to work with subjects they are not used to, uh, to be in the, in the academy, in the university, but it's not enough. We have to change the way we, um, we speak about these other subjects. And that's a good uh, example I could give you. Uh, there is this guy in, in America, William Ewing. He has a book selling, it's called Philosophy, and pop culture, something like that. The, you know already, he has there's a book of philosophy and Simpsons, philosophy and dark. Um, and there is this book, Metallica and philosophy. For me, it's very important because I love uh, heavy metal. And, and for me, it would be a nice opportunity to connect uh, these kind of things. But it's a, uh, it's a big um, delusion uh, it's to read the book and to see, OK, heavy metal is not a um, usual subject for philosophy. That's not a usual subject for uh, academics. But the way people are, are handling with, uh, with the, the works of, from Metallica, it's very conservative. Uh, un unfortunately, um, in this book, they are just speaking about the lyrics. They are trying to make connection between the lyrics of um, one song from Metallica and connecting to Kierkegaard. Uh, and they say things like that. Uh, this song, um, it recalls Nietzsche. Um, these um, lyrics remembers. Um, Hegel, I don't know. And the, the heavy metal is much more than lyrics. The, it's a very conservative way to, to handle with the heavy metal as, as if it would be just text. It's more than text. It's the performance. It's body. It's aesthetics. It's politics. And, and there are a lot of uh, interesting questions in heavy metal. For example, I have written about the meaning of screaming in heavy metal. Why do people uh, love to scream in, in heavy metal? What is, are, the, are the aesthetic meanings of screaming in the voice that screams in, 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 uh, in the history of art in what they are doing in heavy metal? And then just to show you that um, we, 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 we like to expand the canon, but it's uh, the canon of authors, the canon of questions, 
but we have to change the way we are going to um, to work with these uh, other other subjects. So I I would like to finish then my presentation. I hope um, you could follow. Just uh, what can I show you? Um, uh, what? Um, okay, that's that's very important. The last the last one. There is a kind of methodology of pop philosophy. Ah, that would be very difficult to explain. I will try. Um, um, I didn't invent it. Uh, I'm trying to remix things I learned from Nietzsche, from Heidegger, from Derrida, and, and, and I come with this term terminology that I call versions, inversions, and this new word, transversions. I don't know. And what I think about it, there are in our culture, Western culture, a lot of versions. What we mean that? What does it mean? That that means um, dualities, um, evil against good and beautiful against ugliness, uh, and beauty ag against ugliness. What more? Um, right against wrong, and um, culture against nature, and male against female and theory against pra practice. And there are a lot of, of these dualities in our culture. They are not in a, in a Facebook list, but they are some kind of, of values. And they are um, uh, conditional, conditioning our way of thinking. That's what I'm saying. And, um, especially in aesthetics, in the tradition, beauty was always better than ugliness. I mean, these versions, they are dualities, and they are, yeah, um, they, they have um, some kind of um, difference of power. The beauty is better than ugly, and uh, right is better than wrong. Um, in, uh, uh, and culture is better than nature, and mind is better than affect, and uh, rationality is better than emotion. There are kind of hierarchy uh, in these dualities. Uh, it, it's the, you can resume, in, in the imperialism of the same uh, against the difference. And we, I can recognize in our history, people trying to be, to get Free to escape of these vessels, but most of the time they are just doing investment. That means they are um, um, putting the other power at, at the first place. And we can see that in the statics. Um, we a uh, um, long time people are trying to forget uh, to fight against the imperialism of beauty and trying to put ugliness as the, in the first place. We can see that by Baudelaire, uh, by Vito Hugo, um, we can see that in movies like Shrek or, or Monsters S.E.R. Um, we are trying to, to fight against beauty, putting ugliness in his place. We think that um, that that doesn't solve the problem. Uh, it's just to invent, and we can. It, it, it be. I mean, it, it's the beginning of the solution, but it's not the solution. What we are looking are transversals of these dualities. Um, I mean, another way to escape without just to invent the polarity. That's what we're trying to do in pop philosophy. And that's what I will try to do in, in pop pedagogy. And then just to finish, what is traversal to transfer? I don't know, it's very difficult to explain, but it has something to do with paradox experience. If you can see this picture, you can see that there are two ways to, to look at uh, at it, 
you can see um, a female face, you can see a guy player an in instrument, and you can see both. There are people, you, you, they cannot see anything. But this idea of, of um, um, how do you say that, um, um, simultaneity, uh, that's the idea of transvestment. Uh, we, we taught to get a um, synthesis, we taught to get a fusion, we taught to get a third, a third uh, uh, level as by Hegel dialects. We are just uh, supporting this, this kind of, um, we cannot decide well, which one is the uh, right or the wrong. Um, I, I mean, this is a, a way to describe the transversion. There's a picture from Brazilian artist Vic Muniz, who, who is very, very famous. We, we can see that too. Uh, you can see a lot of images simultaneously. At, at the same time, um, oh, there's a lot of jokes about that. It's a paradox way of thinking. You can say six and nine at the same time. You can be happy to see both, and you can be happy to see land um, at, at the same time. That's what I mean, I try to do with this idea of translation. Um, of course, that has to do with transdisciplinarity a transculturality. If you have time, you can talk about that later. Um, um, you, if you read, if you have read the article, I have spoke about my experience uh, doing performance philosophy, what is what I'm doing now. Um, and I, I have written about this experience about uh, um, uh, a professor, she doesn't exist, but they, she had made a talk in, in, in a meeting in the pop philosophy uh, in Brazilian. Um, There's a picture I was talking uh, by an Occupy movement in Rio de Janeiro 10 years ago. Here they are students of mine, they are doing uh, philosophy as performance. The, that's called fragile. Um, here is a picture for me, and um, I'm in state making uh, the question: What does it mean terrorism? Um, I um, I would like to finish one quotation from Nietzsche. He says the most important problems of philosophy uh, are on the street. Um, I mean, the, the question is how we can uh, transport these ideas for a uh, pop pedagogy, but we can talk together now. Yeah, I think it's better, let's finish here. Thank you, hope you could follow. <laughs> Thank you, Charles. Thank you for your, your talk. And anyone has any questions? Can I start with myself? Okay. Um, uh, I was just thinking, Charles, and, and, and how this conversation that you propose can be done in a, in, in a place like Brazil, where uh, there is a very complex multi-ethnic uh, reality there. So you have, for example, the indigenous that have been erased. So with their, uh, with their, their ways of life, the images and, and other, you know, part of their culture. The same thing with uh, other black community that we uh, Brazil still didn't um, uh, arrive at a, a way of social justice uh, to this community. So I just want uh, I want to to know from you how these groups uh, can take part in this conversation because.